Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Best Life and Beyond. This is Disneyland. What to expect in the months of January and February of 2023. Yes, this is going to be your guide for the next couple of months here at Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. We're going to share with you everything you need to know. We are going to talk about attractions, refurbs, events, everything going on that we can possibly think of. Yeah. So if you haven't yet, take a second to subscribe. If anything does change from now until the end of February or something in between there, we will make sure to make some more uh, videos or update you in the comments and or description. Weather is going to be covered as well. And look, it's raining today. Uh, you can see we got an umbrella here and it's gloomy and wet. Uh, <laughs> we've had a bit of rain uh, in the last week or so. And uh, these are the months that uh, typically and historically that we get rain here in California or Southern California. So be prepared for that when you come. Uh, umbrella is a good thing to have, a poncho, some waterproof shoes those types of things just be prepared and a good tip if you do want to have a poncho don't wait to come and get it while you're here at the parks they will charge a lot more sorry disney uh, but you can actually have those ahead of time on amazon you can get a whole pack of them for under 20 dollars. so that way you just have more and it's a lot easier and what spencer touched on is having waterproof shoes is key if yeah. you can figure out a way to get some waterproof shoes we use waterproof hokas and uh, they're a game changer, not having wet feet. <laughs> It'll extend your day. And uh, sometimes, you know, people leave during the rain, so the, the park clears out and you're gonna wanna stay and take advantage of that. Now, throughout this video, we're gonna be talking about attractions going down, refurbs, those type of things. And first and foremost, great moments with Mr. Lincoln right here in Town Square. Yeah, and the whole gallery, it's all going to go down on January 9th. Yeah. And it'll reopen on the 27th. But yeah. the Happy Haunts, the Haunted Mansion 50th display, will finally be done with. Uh, it's, it's going to its final resting place. <laughs> and speaking of January 9th, we're going to be talking a lot about January 9th and something <laughs> important I know to Katie. Yeah. Sadly, uh, Christmas will be leaving us. Yeah. That means the costumes uh, with all the characters leaving us, say bye-bye. The tree, oh, the, the garland, tree. the lights, Main everything. Oh. Um, not that it's not still magical and wonderful without the Christmas decor, but we just love it so much, at least I do, especially. Um, so things are rapidly changing on January 9th. That's where we, the, the whole season is getting changed. Yeah. The hours will drastically change that day. So after January 9th, we're going back to 10 p.m. closing, 9 p.m. closing, 8 p.m. So check it very closely if you're coming yeah. to the park because you don't want to be, you know, taken off guard. It varies a little bit. Uh, you can be assured that midweek uh, it closes a little earlier and like Katie said between 8 and 9 o'clock depending on certain days. There's special events that we will soon talk about that also affect that but uh, just know the hours are shrinking. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is ticketed after hours events. And there is one event that spans basically January and February. Yeah, it is Sweethearts Night. Um, the event will start at 9 p.m. Uh, so that does mean that the park will close fairly early like we mentioned before. Here are the dates, January 31st, February 2nd, 5th, 7th, 9th, 14th, and 16th. Of course, February 14th for the Sweethearts Night. That would, be the, that would be the good one to go to. We're actually going to the first one on January 31st to cover that. That way you can kind of like see what it looks like in case you did get tickets. Disneyland has had this event before. Uh, we just haven't gone yet, so this will be our first time attending, and I'm curious to see if anything has changed uh, from the first time. Like maybe they added something, improved on something. Yeah. Normally it's a lot of, you know, photo ops and some specialty foods and, you know, whatnot. So I'm kind of curious to see what it'll be like this year. And speaking of Valentine's Day, Disneyland does offer some food, treats, merchandise, and even some photo ops. And of course, we will be there to cover it just like years prior. And in March, there will be Princess Night. We will be going to that as well. We'll start talking about that as we get a little bit closer into March. Yeah, and another event that we're super excited about. We love this every year. Lunar New Year is back at DCA, Disney California Adventure. What are those dates, Katie? January 20th through February 15th. We just love that Lunar New Year, and it's going to be the year of the rabbit. That's the year of the KT. There you go. Which is pretty cool. There uh, you so go. we will make sure that we are there to cover the whole thing for you. Yeah, there's parades, there's food, there's entertainment. Uh, it's, it's great. It's a great event. Uh, it's a beautiful event too. The colors, Truly. 
uh, the pageantry, as it were. Dare I say that word? Yeah, no, it's fabulous. It's, yeah. it's truly one of those great events. So make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on Lunar New Year, Best Life and Beyond style. We'll be there. Now, as per usual with these what to expect videos, we cover all the ride refurbs, what's gonna be down, the dates, what's gonna be coming back, those types of things. Stay tuned, we're gonna to get to that. But first, we're gonna talk about nightly entertainment here at Disneyland and those schedules changing. As we mentioned before, the hours will be changing, uh, but with that will be the entertainment schedule. After January 9th, you're gonna have Mickey's Mix Magic which I think is not going to have pyro. I don't see a confirmation on the website there. That basically takes the place of whatever fireworks show yeah. uh, was in place prior to that. But as far as Fantasmic goes, I know there's a lot of Fantasmic fans out there like myself. And starting on the night, Fantasmic will go dark until January 27th, and then you will only be able to catch the show on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sunday nights. And it'll still be two performances, so if you want to see Fantasmic, Make sure, again, you double check that entertainment schedule. And starting on January 27th is the D100 100th <laughs> anniversary fireworks show, which is called Wondrous Journeys. Yeah, it's a new fireworks show, so we're excited to see that. Remember, the fireworks at Disneyland are not always going to happen. Uh, it's a little bit strict with the rules here, so as far as weather, wind goes, yeah, and weather, and, weather permitting, yeah. it will happen at 9:30 every night, and we're gonna definitely be here to cover it for you. Just keep in mind, in February, there's quite a few of those Sweethearts Nights events, and you won't be able to see the fireworks on those nights. And then over at Disney California Adventure, also for the 100th anniversary of the company, World of Color One premieres. That's a, a new show that they have for the uh, for the celebration. And while we're on the subject of D100, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway opening January 27th officially. That doesn't mean Toontown's opening. They're just going to open Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. I'm excited to see Mickey's Runaway Railway. From what I've heard, it's the same attraction, but the queue is just very different. We are going to be on that, and I am so excited to be here. It's going to be a blast. Some other fun things that are going to be happening during the 100th, there's going to be a Magic Key popcorn bucket, so it's kind of cool that that's coming back. I know a lot of Magic Key holders are pretty excited yeah. for that, um, especially if you like that Disneyland popcorn. And it's also worth mentioning that for the 100th, they're going to decorate the castle. Yeah. Uh, there'll be decorations all around the park, I think, that will reflect the platinum uh, colors and all that stuff, right? Celebration. I'm yeah. excited to see it. I mean. I think just seeing the decorations from the concept art of the castle, yeah. uh, the little fountains, I mean, yeah. it's going to be great. They said that the majority of the celebration is going to take place in Anaheim, California. While it'll still, I'm sure, be honored in you know all the other parks, right. uh, the fact that it'll be centered here, we're going to have yeah. like the most of it, and I'm really excited to check it out. Yeah, this is the home base for the 100th anniversary. Another thing that's pretty cool about the 100th, if you're a Magic Key holder, the Magic Key Terrace, they're going to be introducing some new food and drink options, oh. uh, like a mint julep cocktail nice. and some other yummy things. So we'll make sure that we get up there to taste and sip and savor and <laughs> enjoy all of that. We enjoy the Magic Key Terrace. I it's, love it. It's a nice view up there. They have yeah. great food offerings. Uh, and if you are a Magic Key holder, uh, we highly recommend you take advantage of that. You just have to check and, and see if you can get on the virtual queue over there. Uh, but it's well worth it. We highly recommend it. And of course, with the D100 celebration, there's got to be merch. There's already merch. Obviously, that's where I got this. We, we bought a bunch of stuff. Yeah, uh, there's but a ton of merchandise. There's a ton, and I, I expect that there might be some more uh, throughout the celebration. So keep your eyes open, and if you see something you like, Katie always says, Get it. Get because it. Because there's a thing that happens at Disney where stuff just you know, it, 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 you never know what it's going to be. It depends on the item and right. what becomes popular. Like we ran into some folks today who watched the channel who said, we're looking for that jacket right now. We yeah. can't find it. So, it, you know, depending on the day you're here, sometimes you can find that stuff. Sometimes you can't, depending on what store you're looking in. We always recommend going to World of Disney and Downtown Disney. They seem to have a very comprehensive and wide variety I feel of like merchandise. They also, yeah, I feel like they also like restock the most. Another bonus, a lot of people don't have Magic Keys as they're not on sale anymore, and a yeah. lot of people 
can't afford to come into the park, but like your best bet is always World of Disney. World of Disney and Downtown Disney. Speaking of Downtown Disney, we need to start talking about that a little bit because we actually have a lot of changes coming. The hotels yeah. are changing. We've seen some changes in Ralph Brennan's Jazz Kitchen. They've already started to shift some stuff around. Yeah. And thankfully right now, Tortilla Joe's is safe, but be sure to stay tuned to our channel so we can keep you abreast of what's happening in Downtown Disney. And we're gonna make sure to do a comprehensive update of Downtown Disney because there's so much going on. Yeah. That'll be a separate video, but, yeah. ju but just know <laughs> that, uh, you know, there'll be stuff for D100 over there as, as you know, as far as you yeah, know, probably food yeah. offerings and things and, and that stuff we're gonna go research and find out for you. Right, right. Uh, I would assume too, you know, it's like I was mentioning earlier, not everybody can actually get into the park. Yeah. And I think that Disney is going to be utilizing Downtown Disney um, to be able to share in the 100th anniversary you know, with people that don't have tickets or magic keys. And as I talk about the magic keys, we still don't have any update of when magic keys will go back on sale. Yeah. We get asked that question all the time. And unfortunately, there's just nothing that has been answered. No, no questions. We don't know what's going on with that whole thing. We, um, we recently had a brief window where they opened it back up. Yeah. And then that window closed. Which I so think was maybe two days, I think it was. They went um, two days, whatever the number was that was available. And we assume that that probably related to the people who didn't renew. Maybe it was right. directly related to that number. Yeah. But we'll keep you posted if we hear anything about that. And same thing with reservations. That's another question that we get asked a lot. You know, yeah. what's happening with reservations? Do you think they're going to keep them? So I, I don't know. I think they're... As of now. Yeah. Everything is the same. As Everything's far as pretty much the same. Still the park hopping after one o'clock. Right. I uh, have to be honest with you, the days at Disneyland are becoming very complicated for a lot of people. So, uh, you know, I just hope that what we're providing here is at least some help in planning your day and making it a little bit better and keeping you on top of all the changes and things happening. Yeah. Now switching gears a little bit, we're gonna talk about Lightning Lane Genie Plus. There's been some changes to that program that we need to let you know about. Yeah, especially since we last did one of these guide videos. Yeah. Um, it looks like now Genie Plus and Lightning Lane can actually like sell out. I mean, we knew Lightning Lane's individual Lightning Lane's, um, like the olive cart ones, like Rise of the Resistance and um, you know Radiator Springs Racers. They can actually like sell out for the day, but now Genie Plus can actually sell out for the day. We've also noticed that the price has gone as high as uh, about 30 bucks a day. It fluctuates. Yeah, so if you're a Magic Key holder, you do get a discount on it, but something that we want to uh, make note of, especially since we were here with some of our friends semi-recently over the holiday season and we used the uh, Genie Plus, yeah. you can't purchase that until you're actually scanned into the park. I was trying to like purchase it ahead of time and then realized, oh wait, I can't do that. So if you are a Magic Key holder and you want to use your, you know, slightly discounted Genie Plus for the day, if you're coming with some friends or family, yeah. uh, just be advised. That's something to note. I didn't even realize it. So I just wanted to make sure we shared all that information with you. And if you're like our friends, Victor and Pixar Charlie, and you're a Ducks fan, Anaheim Ducks hockey, there is gonna be an Anaheim Ducks day here at Disneyland. Yeah, it's coming back and it'll be on January 12th. Um, some notes about that, the park isn't going to close early. It's not a separate ticketed event. Uh, I know some people have asked us, is this like something where I need it, you know, like Sweetheart's Night or um, no. Princess Night? No, this is Anaheim Ducks Day. If you have a regular admission and you're in DCA, you'll be able to partake in that. Uh, from what I understand, I think there might be something like photo ops or whatnot. We haven't actually done it, um, no. but if we happen to be here, we'll be sure to cover it. I know, I'm pretty sure, like Spencer said, Pixar Charlie and uh, Victor will, will likely be there enjoying the Anaheim Ducks festivities. There are in-house uh, Ducks experts, you guys. <laughs> uh, they've been to games together many times. If we can, I would kind of like to see it, even though I'm you know, not some hockey fan. I would still kind of like to see it. Okay, the moment you've been waiting for. This is the pertinent information I think that everybody wants to hear. Ride refurbs, ride closures. We're going to start off 
with the holiday layover of It's a Small World holiday. Yeah, that'll actually be closing on January 9th, but it'll be reopened by January 20th. Kind of a quick turnaround on that. Yeah, also going down on January 9th for a long overdue refurb is Indiana Jones. If you've been on the attraction lately, there were a lot of things in Indiana Jones, lighting, just so many things that yeah. haven't been working. But what's crazy though, I think it was like when the park reopened, I noticed the lighting and effects were really good. Yeah. My question that I want to know is what exactly else is going to change? You know, if, yeah. will they go back to how Indiana Jones was when it first reopened? I don't know, but uh, I am curious to see what's going to happen. Who knows? So, yeah. um, a lot Indiana, of moving parts on that uh, yeah, attraction. So yeah. I'm sure they're going to go through it and uh, enhance whatever they can, and yeah, I'm excited for that. it needs a lot that. of work. It needs a lot of work, yeah. but that'll reopen, um, I think it said, in uh, spring. So we don't know an exact date for reopen, and, you know, for good reason. It, it's it, a, it's kind of like what happened to Pirates. Remember, we didn't have a date for yeah. the longest time. It's, uh, got, it's got a lot of work happening. A lot of work happening. Keeping in that similar neighborhood, but New Orleans Square, my favorite attraction, Haunted Mansion, is going for its refurb to take it from Haunted Mansion Holiday back to normal. It's been extended. Yeah, actually. so that'll actually go down on the 30th of January and it'll reopen February 10th. So this, I don't think this has ever happened where it's been that long, but the main reason that we heard for that is if, if Indiana Jones and Haunted Mansion were going down at the same time, I don't think it'd be good because that makes sense. It's yeah, it's one of those things where we need these are e-ticket attractions, and you can't yeah. have that many e-ticket attractions down at, at one time. Is that what you're saying? Kind of. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. The last day that you'll be able to experience Haunted Mansion Holiday is the 29th, because on the 30th, she's closed for well, about 11 days. Yeah. And of course, we got to talk about the treehouse. Uh, it's been a contentious issue as far as people going, what's it going to be? What's it going to be? And now we know it's going to be the Adventureland treehouse inspired by the Swiss Family Robinson, which was the original incarnation of the treehouse. That's what I remember as a child, and I loved it. Uh, one of my favorite things was the bamboo water cups that would take the water up, up to the top. I thought it was so genius. Um, so I'm very excited to, to see that come back, and we don't have a date yet. So Yeah, a lot of people were kind of speculating that sometime you know, in February it would reopen. Yeah. Um, and I thought for the 100th, I feel like what Disney's trying to do is they're trying to get as much as they can reopened and good to go by the 27th of January yeah. when the 100th starts. That'd be really cool. Um, so, I don't know. I think it would be awesome, but I'm not holding my breath because it looks like from when they've taken the tarps down, um, you know, whenever there's high winds, it looks like there's still a good amount of work that needs to be done. Yeah. Um, my also, my other thought is that it might be longer than we even think. I'm almost thinking maybe summer, um, just because I think they're going to try to enhance accessibility. As well as Magic Band uh, interactions, yeah. I'm hearing, so, possibly. And, we and don't that, know, but... That's not like a, a small feat. I mean, if you look at, you know, Toontown, just that, you know... That's a, a lengthy thing that's taking a lot of time. And yeah. I mean, also think about Tron and Walt Disney World, how long that's yeah. taken. Yeah. So on the Disney timeline, I don't expect anything very soon. And then over at Disney California Adventure, another significant closure is Grizzly River Run. It's kind of an annual thing that happens about this time yeah, of year. Yeah, it, it usually does. They don't really keep it open. Yeah. You know, so it'll go down on January 9th. And then my thought is usually I think it's like end of February it'll probably reopen pretty soon around then. Yeah. Um, I do know that the, those are like the major closures that you need to know about. Radiator Springs Racers is going down for about like six days. And over on Pixar Pier, Emotional Whirlwind goes down from January 30th to February 10th. Check the Disneyland app, look at, look at the info section. Uh, where the calendar is and check a day and then yeah. scroll down you'll see what's available on the days that you're yeah. here it'll also show you the hours and whatnot and remember it's a free disneyland app you can download it and honestly i wouldn't come to the parks without having that disneyland app it's a weird time now where we live in where you basically almost have to have the disneyland app yeah. in order to do a, a pretty solid day at disney so yeah. As crazy as that sounds, that's going to be your best bet and that's going to be your, your tool and your guide before you do anything coming to Disneyland. 
download the free Disneyland app and it'll be your best friend. Now something new that arrived in 2022 at Disneyland and Disney California Adventure was Magic Band Plus. There's new Magic Bands coming on the market all the time here at Disneyland, different themes and things like that. Yeah, it seems like uh, we get a new one all the time. Yeah. I mean, whatever you're into, whatever ride or IP that you're into, they probably have a Magic Band for it. Or are coming with it. But... Or, or they're going to come out with one. Now just be aware, it's not like it is out in Florida if you've ever been out there to Walt Disney World. You can't put a credit card on it yet. You can get into the park with it. You can utilize your Lightning Lane and Genie Plus with it. You can have some interactions with some of the uh, attractions and the nightly shows. Different things happen, uh, you know, based on where you are in the park. So it's kind of fun, but just be aware that that is something that's here. You can utilize it. You don't need to utilize it if you don't want to. It is but, completely optional. Yeah. I know since we've got them, we use them for, you know, a hot minute because it was... It was cool to not have to whip out our phone like yeah. that. That was a good convenience. But having to charge it and, I don't know, just remember to put it on. And there's something about it at Disneyland that I noticed we just haven't been using it as much. Yeah. As much as I thought I would. I'm telling you, that if you can put a, uh, a bank a card, card on there, yeah. that's the game changer for me. So I don't know what would be my tipping point of using it more often. I, I would say maybe if I was a resort guest and, you know, I think that might be the little extra game changer, but yeah. it's odd though that for some reason in Disney World, it's, I find myself, I use it all the time, like yeah. almost 24 seven. I think sometimes when you're at sit down restaurants and you're able to just scan your magic band, uh, you know, that, that was also a, a big difference and you can't really do that here. So. There's something about the Magic Band thing. We noticed not a lot of people are wearing them. We're always kind of looking around while we're here in the parks. And I don't see a lot of people wearing Magic Bands. But uh, nevertheless... I mean, I think it's it's a work in progress. Maybe. And I think they knew that going in. So right. uh, expect more to happen with that. We'll keep you updated when things change and, and you know more enhancements come out of that. And I, I'm sure they will in the future. And that about does it for your Disneyland Resort January and February guide of what to expect. We tried to cover everything. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Let us know. And of course, if anything else comes up, we will be sure to inform you. Either we'll make a new video or we will post it in connection to this video. And if you like this video and you found it informative, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on your bell notifications for when we post new videos about our favorite place, Disneyland. Absolutely. Thank you for watching. Thanks to our Patreons. And we'll see you next time on Best Life and Beyond. Bye-bye, everybody.